All right, so our goal here, if you can't see these, I'll write them, rewrite them. But our goal here is to figure out what missing value we can put in the equation uh, to make this true, or in other words, to make it make sense. So first we have 24 divided by some number gives you negative 12. To figure out what should go there, right? to figure out this division problem, I'm going to use multiplication. I'm going to think, oh, negative 12 times what number would give me 24. That's just easier for me to think about. And I realized that, oh, two groups of negative 12 gives us a positive 24. So two groups of negative two groups of negative 12 would have to give you a positive 24. And that brings us back to that rule where a negative 2 times a negative 12 is positive 24. So here you can say n equals negative 2. Next we have, it says, five, I'll write it over here, 5 divided by 2.5 equals something. And you can keep track of this by thinking what this means, which is that how, well, one way to interpret it is how many two and a halves does it take to get five? Well, if I have one two and a half and I add another two and a half, then I get five. So it takes two two and a halves to get five, and that's exactly what this is saying. When you see five divided by two and a half, you can think of it as saying, how many two and a halves go into five? That's what it's looking for. And the answer is two. There's two of them. So n is two. And the next problem, it says n divided by a negative three. These parentheses don't affect the problem. It's just highlighting the negative three. It gives you negative four. I'm going to use a similar strategy that I used up here. I'm going to use multiplication. Something divided by negative three gave us negative four. So then I want to ask, well, what's negative four times negative three? A negative times a negative gives us a positive and then 3 times 4 is 12, so it's positive 12. So here, n equals positive 12, and that makes sense. Positive 12 divided by negative 3 gives us a negative 4. And then last, maybe the one that's the most intimidating, negative 16 divided by negative, oh, excuse me, positive 1 fourth. What does that equal? What does n equal? Well, um, this is going to be a negative number because we have a positive a negative divided by a positive gives a negative value. And what this is really saying, without even using an algorithm, let's think about this for a moment. It, this is saying almost the exact same thing here, which is how many of these one-fourths go into negative 16? And how can we figure that out? Well, no, there's four-fourths in a whole, right? If I have, I don't know, a bar of chocolate and I split it in four pieces. This is one whole. And in one whole, there's four one-fourths. So for every one we have, you can think of this as having one, we have four-fourths. So what happens if I have 16 holes, right, which I have here, 16? Well, each of them have four-fourths, so 16 holes will have 16 times four-fourths. Each of these will have four, which is what? What's 16 times four? Well, that's 64. And the answer is negative 64, because we're finding out how many um, fourths go into negative 16, not positive. And really, all, all you can do there is multi you see divide by a fourth. Well, multiply by four, because you know that every whole number has four fourths in it. So you're counting the number of groups of four. And that's it. Hope that helped.